All right. Um, so this is just going to be divided into two separate uh, portions. One, Don, uh, will talk about, and the next one will be myself. The first one will, will be myself. So I want to just pick a little bit your brains um, on just what's possible. What are the next 10 years of Ethereum scaling? And um, we believe at Nexus that um, execution environments can become wide and varied. And that the building of a modular CKBM system that allows users to extend with custom instructions, custom, custom instruction sets, machine architectures, etc., is the first step towards seeing a wide variety of um, execution layers on Ethereum. So we want to see execution layers to flourish, right? We have been uh, interacting with the Ethereum virtual machine for almost a decade now. We would want to see something beyond that. And why, why is that? The reason is Solidity and the EVM are fundamentally constrained systems. There's a lot of things that we can't. And um, I've always been fairly dissatisfied about the experience. First, I want to talk about like the nice things. And um, the EVM itself is a beautifully designed system. Um, if either of you have ever read the Ethereum yellow paper, it is very precise. It exactly worked for what it was supposed to do back in 2014 when the Ethereum yellow paper was written. But the EVM is about to turn 10 years old. And we are still stuck, so to say, with the EVM. You know, there's projects that are trying to accelerate the EVM with parallel EVM. Um, you know, obviously we have optimistic Ethereum virtual machines and CK EVMs. And there have been some efforts to go beyond the EVM. But um, nothing has actually resulted in anything useful. And there's many practical considerations, for example, interoperability with other systems and existing tooling. It's had an incredible journey. And it is remarkably simple. The EVM um, has a simple database, as you know, account storage. It keeps some machine state, a program counter. It has uh, a gas metering system. And then, of course, a simple stack and a random access memory. And you load the EVM code. And this is nice. But what we would like to think about is how could we make it so that programming on a blockchain felt like you were not programming on a blockchain? How could we make it so that applications and smart contracts could be, could deliver a, a developer experience that felt just as if you were coding for the cloud? So here are just a few many really big limitations in my opinion about the Ethereum virtual machine. For instance, you cannot do floating point arithmetic. If you want to do any sort of numerical calculation, you just can't. There are some solidity libraries to do it, but it's just not well suited. So if you want to do any um, like numerical things, uh, most uh, prominently any sort of like ML workload, I'll leave the question of why would you want to do that to some other <laughs> discussion. You can't do it. You can't interoperate with existing tooling in the ecosystem. So when I go and code something uh, on a database or on the back end or something like that, like developers can just like import uh, a lot of very solidified libraries. For example, in Rust, there are very well audited and maintained libraries that just can't be imported on Solidity because there are very few developers at the end of the story. And so there are, there's no support for complex data structures. And it's also because a lot of the computations that we would be interested in doing are actually infeasible in the EVM because of the constraints with gas. And I think this is a very important point. We cannot do unbounded computation. We are bounded by the block gas limit which is about 10 million gas on Ethereum. And that is nothing. 
10 million gas is like a tiny, tiny bit. And in practice, anyone that wants to run any significant computation on the Ethereum virtual machine actually has to split their computation across blocks. That's a terrible developer experience. And obviously, there is no interoperability with Web2 systems. For example, if you've ever coded like a backend system, uh, you use something like JavaScript, you perhaps encrypt your data types with a JSON serialization system. But it happens that the EVM has its own serialization system, which is called RLP. And it's different from everything in the Web2 space. So there's a lot of trouble with uh, interaction. So at Nexus, um, we are working on the Nexus CKVM, right? We are on our second iteration. We launched this about um, four weeks ago. And inside the company, we um, sort of like um, go through all of the possible applications of verifiable computing. And something in which we are especially powerful about um, and just passionate about is essentially dreaming how powerful the world computer could get. How much computational power could we inject on the Ethereum ecosystem? We would like to see a future in which Ethereum is essentially the base layer for consensus. And every L2 and every L3 and you know, L4 or whatever is granted with enormous computational power. So that developer experience was beautiful. And the classes of applications that we could code on Ethereum could feel almost indistinguishable from Web2. Yeah, this is what I just said. So we believe that rollups should be free to choose their own execution environments. So the Nexus CKVM is a CKVM for risk phi There's multiple reasons for that. But it happens that it can be extended with custom instructions. And in particular, we are able to build um, and prove other virtual machine architectures. Most importantly, the EVM, but also WebAssembly, the Solana virtual machine, um, the OVM, which is a slide modification of the EVM, and um, at least theoretically, the Cairo VM, as well as any other VM that you have in mind. And the reason we can do this is because this has been the goal of Nexus from day one, for it to be extensible and modular so that we can essentially extend it with custom instructions and prove this other instruction set architecture. We would want rollups to be able to choose whatever execution environment was best for their own application, even with custom instructions in their instruction set to accelerate special purpose computations. We believe that uh, the space of rollup communication, for example, right now happens, you know, with solidity, etc. but it should be as simple as how two servers communicate with each other. Let's say just like a JSON RPC type of system. It should be that simple. So why are we not there yet? And it's for two reasons. Number one, we do not have high performance verifiable computation in the market that is highly professional. And number two, this verifiable computation system is not modular. It does not allow developers to extend the CKVM in custom ways, so that they could build their own CKBMs. So for the second iteration of the Nexus CKBM, we are extending what we call the modular CKBM stack with other functionality, which is especially designed for this purpose. And we will continue working on this, and that's exactly what I want to talk about, which is essentially the philosophy of having a modular CKBM architecture that can be extended with custom instructions, custom proof systems, and even custom instruction set architectures. Our hope is that we can develop uh, an open source, totally free ecosystem library, which is uh, a link to a repo later, of CKBMs and CKBM architectures, where the provers and the front ends and the instructions can all be sort of like modularly coupled together. <clears throat> this is usually what we talk about, but we are on our second iteration of the, of the Nexus CKBM. We'll get to the Nexus 3, Nexus 4, but I'll say that uh, at Nexus, even though performance is a huge point of focus uh, 
just for the project. It's not the most central thing necessarily. Modularity and extensibility and uh, um, coupling with developer tools is a top priority. And our philosophy is about modular vertical improvements about the CKVM stack. If you take a look at our GitHub repo, it has um, essentially multiple components from the instruction set architecture to the memory checking techniques to the backend prover um, to the compilation system, et cetera. And all of this can be swapped in and out through generic interfaces. In fact, we recently announced the um, sort of like um, a Jolt inspired CPU arithmetization technique being merged into the Nexus 2.0 repo. Um, I've talked about this um, uh, earlier, but essentially, it, this is just an example of how this code base is highly modular. The Joel team from A16C uh, designed this very advanced arithmetization techniques for CPU architectures for RISC V. And we have been able to essentially put it in uh, the rest of our proving stack fairly easily. And the reason is we had been actually awaiting for this exact step for quite a bit. And the CKBM code base was designed to allow for something like that to happen. For the arithmetization of the CPU to be different from the proving of such arithmetization, et cetera. <clears throat> so for the next iterations of the CKBM, we are going to be publishing uh, new things. For example, a profiling system that will give developers a lot of insight into numerical data about the performance of their applications on the CKVM. And the good thing is, every time that the Nexus CKVM is upgraded through community efforts, we're not uh, the only ones working on the CKVM. Essentially, every application that compiles and gets proven with the CKVM gets better. There are compounding effects. The more uh, modular type of like systems that developers can choose from, the better uh, the optionality is for applications. The better the tooling is, like profiling, the better it is for developers. The more high performance the CKVM is, the better it is for all the applications in the ecosystem. Um, so the current prover for the CKVM is the Hypernova proof system. Uh, we've talked about this before. You can check it out on our website. But it's uh, essentially powered by folding techniques that rely on highly efficient proof aggregation techniques that are also memory efficient. Um, and this essentially allows us to do incrementally verifiable computation, which is a primitive that allows us to prove programs as they go, essentially ad infinitum. We have our own custom RISC-V instruction set architecture arithmetization system. And this is all on our website, so I won't spend too much time on this. But all of this is, you know, fully open source. And, but most importantly, as mentioned, it's actually pretty modular. For example, our no Nova and Supernova and Hypernova backends are there to use and can be coupled with any CPU architecture that can be arithmetized even with custom uh, like circuits. So if you don't want to prove something within the abstraction of a virtual machine like RISC V, you can actually just take the prover, couple it with a circuit, and just prove it. Not only that, but in fact, the Nexus CKVM can be reduced to a mode in which the CKVM ha is a virtual machine with a single instruction, a VM with one instruction. That one instruction can be a custom circuit. I won't get a lot into the details, but essentially we live not in the Stark universe, some other projects out there, we live in the um, large field universe. And so we have to do some uh, mental gymnastics here powered by this proof systems in order to be able to reduce the workloads of working over two different elliptic curves. Um, we're also fully transparent about our benchmarks. So something that I like to tell um, everybody, that we like to tell uh, everybody, is that the Nexus CKVM right now today is not the most performant um, thing ever. In fact, if you take a look at these numbers, we actually showcase how our Nova prover is slower than the Microsoft Nova prover, which is what we benchmark against. And the reason is we've made many trade-offs to make other things easier, like 
proof compression, which is the system that we use to compress proofs and make them verifiable on Ethereum. So I won't get a lot into the details about this, but essentially the point that we're trying to make in this discussion is that the CKBM itself has modularity as its core primitive, not only from the CKBM stack, the arithmetization and the prover and all of this, <clears throat> but from the extensibility of the CKBM with um, custom instructions, custom CPU architectures, and even uh, custom proving techniques uh, for memory checking and other such things. We essentially aggregate all of this uh, components and then execute them all at once in what we call the execution sequence. And the execution sequence quite literally um, runs a full proving execution for you given your choice as a developer of which components of the stack you wanna use. So in this particular example, what we're showing is the execution process, which essentially consists of execution, which is witness generation, proof production, proof aggregation, and then what we call proof compression. And the end proof is the GROT16 proof. <clears throat> there have been some other projects that have been working on like uh, hyper parallel EVMs. Uh, for example, uh, Monad and um, what was the other one? Well, there are, there are a few, right? And for example, they propose to further decouple this into different components, right? Fully execution, and then to post the witnesses on a data availability layer to allow provers to prove them and then to do all of this in a different fashion. Right now, we're doing it all in a vertically integrated system, which we find is just better for developers. And um, this allows us to further modify like our specific techniques to be able to compress proofs. So for instance, our compression systems for proofs depend on the specific choice of the prover as well as the arithmetization system. But the techniques sort of like can be reused and the code can be reused amongst different choice of provers, instructions, and arithmetization systems. So I'll just finish saying um, that we recently released um, the second version of our CKBM SDK, which essentially allows developers to do um, a subset of what I just mentioned, which is to choose essentially how they want to um, execute the, their provers and customize it, their CKVM. And so um, I'll invite you all to check it out. It's all open source, it's all free. Um, the next, there will be a next iteration. So after the Nexus 2, there's obviously gonna be a Nexus 3. And um, well, it will get better. And uh, well, we invited everybody here in the community to, to contribute because this is, most likely a public good, right? And our hope is that as the CKBM gets better, 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 and the um, open source ecosystem around it gets better and better and better, more and more teams can be benefited from the developments on the CKBM, right? Um, and you can just use it and deploy it on the cloud and use it as, as you want. Oh, and <laughs> you know, excuse that random <laughs> slide, uh, but that is actually done right after, so that's me. Thank you. <laughs>